Hello, welcome back to another recorded lecture for CEGR 3143, Hydraulics and Hydrology. I'm Jim Bowen. Today's topic is control volumes. This is the first of two lectures on control volumes. This lecture is divided up into three parts. Part one is what are control volumes? What are they? I have two examples, kind of similar, the two examples that's on pages one and two of the notes. Next, how do we analyze control volumes? That's, as, that's on pages three to five. I will introduce something called the Reynolds Transport Theorem that was developed for specifically for analyzing these temporal changes in control volumes. Then part three, which equation do I use? On pages six to nine, I will show various forms of the continuity equation that are appropriate for different situations. This is our first example. It's a flow through a stormwater manhole. What you see here is flow from left to right where, where on the upstream side of the manhole there is a pipe that is four feet in diameter. That's D1. It through the manhole uh, the collection box there is a reduction in the pipe diameter so the the outgoing pipe diameter is two feet and we might be given the velocity and diameter on the upstream side the diameter on the downstream side and be asked to calculate the velocity of the water exiting the manhole or the collection box and we're going to call this area between location one and location two our control volume. There is a particular volume of water in here. And, and the general question would be, given this situation, do we have enough information to solve this problem? As you can probably figure out, no, we don't have enough information. We need to know what's happening to the water level in the manhole. Is it constant or not? If it is constant, then the amount of water, the volume of water in our control volume is constant. If the water level is rising, then the amount of water in the control volume is increasing. And in the case that the water level is falling, the amount of water in that control volume is decreasing. This situation where the water level is constant is the only situation that we've had so far. It's a steady problem and we know how to handle those problems. What we need is some way to handle the problems where the water level is either rising or falling. Another example, somewhat simpler, quite similar actually, is the water level in a bathtub. We have a bathtub with a given surface area. A sub s is the bathtub surface area. It at time zero has a height in the bathtub of a, of a variable h. There's q coming in and there q in coming in and q out going out and we're asked to solve for the time rate of change in the bath the time rate of change of the water depth in the bathtub. How do we do that? We need an equation for that and that's what this lecture is about. In general there's two ways to approach this sort of analysis we can imagine a, a, an element of fluid and that we might follow that element of fluid as it moves. So we're following it with the flow. That's referred to as a Lagrangian analysis. Or on the other hand, we might take that volume of fluid and fix it in space. As the water moves, the water would come into our fixed volume and out of our fixed volume. That's what's referred to as an Eulerian analysis. It turns out that Lagrangian analysis is closer to the basic physics of the problem. So sometimes we use that. On the other hand, in many instances, the Eulerian analysis is more practical. And uh, what we need is some way to connect these two. There is this theorem presented by Osborne Reynolds called the Reynolds Transport theorem that does that for us. It seems to me we've talked about this a little before, but what the, uh, the transport theorem says that the total time rate of change of a substance B 
or a, a, a property B in the subscript S for system and B represents some sort of extensive property of interest that is mass, momentum, energy, heat. We want something that's extensive meaning that it depends on the amount that you have of it. If you have more mass than if say B is mass and the more mass you have the, the, the higher B would be. That's an extensive property depends on the amount. Heat is an example of an extensive process or an extensive property. Temperature is not. Okay, so for any of these extensive properties, the Reynolds transport system says the time rate of change of B in the system is equal to the local derivative, the local time derivative of B in the control volume and the time rate of change of B going out. So that's outflow from the control volume minus DDT of BCV on the inlet side. So this is inflow to the control volume. Back to our problem we talked about earlier. In the case where the bathtub level is constant because it's a incompressible fluid, what we know is that the flow in equals the flow out. And otherwise, we've seen from before when we've talked about continuity for incompressible fluids, that the time rate of change of the volume of the bathtub is going to be equal to that the volume flow rate in minus the volume fl flow rate out. Turns out this is a special case of our Reynolds transport theorem where x in our case is the mass in the system. And since uh, if in that case x is equal to m, so we're looking at the time rate of change in a system for mass, mass itself can't be created or destroyed. So that means that ddt of the mass in the system is, e, is always zero. It's defined to be zero. So in that case that the time rate of change for the mass in the control volume is the rate at which the mass is flowing into the control volume minus the rate of change or the, the rate at which mass is flowing out of the control volume. And this is the version of the Reynolds transport, the special version of the Reynolds transport equation that we're going to use for solving the problems that we solve. And next we're going to go on to show the various versions of the continuity equation that we might come across. We set up a, a general problem here where this is our control volume between locations 1 and 2. And to figure out which version of the, the continuity equation that we should use, we need to ask two questions. The first question is, is the fluid incompressible? Yes or no? And the second question is, is this a steady problem? That is, are there time rates of change of the, some properties in our system? Yes, no, com incompressible, and yes, no, steady, depending on our answers, we'll get four possible versions of the continuity equation. Version A would be in the case that yes, it's incompressible, and two, it's also steady. So this would be, say, water flow, steady water flow through a control volume. In that case, we know that that we can write continuity as Q1 equals Q2. That is, the flow into the control volume equals the flow out of the control volume. If it's not incompressible, so answer one, answer to question one is no, but it is steady. Then we have, say, for instance, the steady flow of a gas. In that case, the version of the continuity equation we're going to use is that the mass flow in equals the mass flow out. In this case, the product of the density and the volume flow rate at location 1, which will have units of mass per time, rho having units of mass per volume, and q having units of volume per time. So the 
the amount of mass that's arriving from at location one has to be the amount of mass that's leaving at location two. So rho one q one must equal rho two q two. Now on to the third possibility that yes it's in yes it's incompressible but no it's not steady. So this would be say our bathtub problem where we have water but the volume of our control volume is changing. And so now we have an equation that gives us a volume balance with the volume of the control volume changing. And the equation to use in this case is that DDT of the volume in the control volume is equal to the flow in minus the flow out. And finally, the last possibility no, it's not incompressible, and no, it's not steady, then what we have is that the time rate of change of mass in the control vol volume is e equal to the mass flow rate in minus the mass flow rate out. So what we would have is that the, the mass in the control volume, which would be rho times the volume of the control volume, it's going to equal rho and q on the inflow side minus rho and q on the outflow side. And this is for the, the general case that the rho coming in, that is the density of the gas flowing in, is not equal to the density of the, of the material flowing out. Now let's go on to an example. And this will be an example where it's an incompressible fluid and, and unsteady flow. Here's our problem. Given an above ground swimming pool has a surface area of 400 feet squared. It is raining on the pool at 1 inches per hour and the drain is open giving an outflow of 20 gallons per minute. Find the change in the pool water depth dhdt in inches per hour. Of our four cases this is case C yes no and the version of continuity to use in that case is that the DDT of the volume in the pool, which is equal to the surface area times the rate of change of the water depth in the pool. So A sub S dH DT is equal to Q in minus Q out. To calculate the Q in, that is how much is arriving from precipitation, we take the precipitation rate, which is given to us in inches per hour, and then multiply it times the, the pool surface area. We'll have to do some unit changes because we're going to want all we were, we're going to want all of these terms in our equation to be in compatible units. Then on the outflow side, which is given to us in gallons per minute, we're going to convert that to cubic feet per second by dividing the gallons per minute by 60 to get it gallons per second and then dividing it by 7.48 to get it in cubic feet per second. If this is cubic feet per second then we'll also need our Q in in cubic feet per second and this term on the left hand side will also be given to us in cubic feet per second. Going on to calculate what the outflow is 20 gallons per minute divided by 7.48 gallons per cubic foot divided by 60 seconds per minute gives us 0 0.0446 cubic feet per second on the outflow. The inflow we take our 1 inch per hour divided by 12 to give us feet per hour then divide by 3600 to give us feet per second. That precipitation rate can then be multiplied times 400 the surface area of the pool to give us an inflow rate of 0 0.0185 cubic feet per second. Plugging those values back into our version of the continuity equation, we say that dH dt is the Q in minus Q out divided by the surface area. Plugging in the numbers we've calculated, we get that dH dt is negative 6.51 times 10 to the minus 5 feet per second. It asks us to give the change in the pool water depth in inches per hour, so we have to convert that back to inches per hour by multiplying by 12 
to convert the feet to inches and then multiplying by 3600 to convert the seconds to hours and you get that DHDT is minus 2.81 inches per hour. That is the pool level is falling at a rate of nearly 3 inches per hour. And that's the end of this lecture. Thanks for listening.